Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we are continuing with my bedtime book of two minute stories that are not actually two minutes. See previous video. Please, please see previous video. So this is my bedtime book of two minute stories. Edited by Rosemary Garland. Illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. First up, Nobby the Proud Horse. Everybody said that Nobby was a fine looking horse. He had a beautiful brown coat which gleamed as though it had just been polished and was soft to touch like velvet. His master, Farmer Jones, was very proud of him, but he made so much fuss of him that Nobby began to think he was better than anyone else. And he stopped speaking to his old friends, Ned the Grey Donkey and Floss the Sheepdog. His friends were upset. You should remember you are only a cart horse, Ned told him. You are not a racehorse. Nobby didn't answer. He went on pulling at the grass while he waited for Farmer Jones to come for him. But Farmer Jones didn't come that day, or the next day, or the day after. Nobby grew worried. What could be the matter? At last he decided to speak to Ned. Ned didn't know. So he asked Floss when he saw her running across the field. Didn't you know, said Floss. Farmer Jones has bought a tractor. I don't suppose he'll need you anymore. The tractor can do all the work you used to do. Not want him anymore? Nobby was upset. He just couldn't believe it. He wandered across the field and squeezed through a gap in the hedge and trotted off down the lane. He wasn't sure where he was going. Just somewhere where someone would want him. Suddenly he stopped. What was that noise? Crunch, crunch. Oh, it was a steamroller coming towards him. <laughs> That, that was funny. Crunch, crunch, pause. Oh, it was just a steamroller. Well, it doesn't have an exclamation point, so I thought I'd read it mildly. Mm -hmm. Also, it's like, oh god, it's gonna run me over! It's gonna run me over! Dude, you can walk faster than that thing moves. He reared up on his hind legs and snorted with fright. Then he turned and raced back the way he'd come. At that moment, Floss bounded round a bend in the lane. Stop, Nobby, she barked when she saw him. Following close behind her was Farmer Jones. Whoa there, old fellow, he cried. Steady does it. At the sound of his voice, Nobby slowed down. What's this all about then, eh? Said Farmer Jones as he came up and patted him. He gave him a sugar lump from his pocket. That's better then, he said as Nobby licked it up from his hand. Now we'll go home and you can help me pull that stupid new tractor of mine out of the mud, said Farmer Jones as they all walked along quietly together. Stupid new tractor. He said, stupid new tractor, thought Nobby to himself, and he's asking me to help him. So he does want me after all. He gave a little neigh of delight at the thought of it. Feeling better, asked Farmer Jones as they heaved the tractor out of the mud. Tractors are all right when the weather is fine, he said. They're a nuisance when the ground is sticky like it is now. That's when you need a good strong horse like you, Nobby. And by the look of the sky, we're going to have more rain. So I shall be needing you a lot, old fellow. Your holiday's over. Holiday? Is that all it was? What a silly horse he'd been. Hello, Ned. Hello, Floss, he called out when he saw his friends. He was never too proud to speak to them anymore. He was just grateful to have such good friends. And another poem. I don't remember there being a poem on every page, but so far. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, there wasn't one in the story of Jeremy and Lollipop Brown, but after that first one... In a lane full of bins is a house full of friends, with a pond at the back, where the ducks go quack. There I love to roam, even though it's far from home, near the house, in the plain, down the end of the lane. I wonder if they threw these poems in so in case you truly didn't want to spend the time to read a story, you could just read a poem and go, the end, good night. <laughs> or it could be a finisher. Like, here's the end of the stories, and here's a poem for you. Good night. <laughs> huh. Once again, the coloring on this page is primarily yellow. Kind of an interesting trend. I, another book we've read, also from this era, also was primarily yellows. I wonder if that was just the cheapest color back then. It might have been. But nice illustration work. Good lines. The style for the donkey and dog are kind of cute because it's slightly different than the more realistic of everything else. They look kind of goofy. Very nice work overall. And I like how they're fit in with the text. You know, the story and the images are strewn across the pages so 
it's all kind of a wrap around, which is rather engaging. All right, next up, extra bouncy. Johnny's ball was extra bouncy. It bounced and bounced and bounced right up into the air. It bounced into the trees. It bounced on the roof. It was big and bright and orange. And when it seemed to lose its bounce just a little, Daddy pumped it up again with a bicycle pump. He pumped and pumped and pumped. There, said Daddy. Now it will bounce right over the chimney tops. Will it really? asked Johnny. And that's what happened. Johnny bounced it hard and away went the big orange ball right over the chimney tops. It was the biggest bounce of all, but it never came back again. Johnny was very sad about his orange ball. He told old Toddy, the gardener, all about it. Never mind, said Toddy. If you wake up very, very early one morning and look out of your window, you might see your extra bouncy ball again. Johnny woke up early the next morning. I didn't see the ball, he said to Toddy. You didn't wake up early enough, said Toddy. So Johnny tried again and again. At last he woke up before it was really and truly light. And there was his big orange ball sitting right on top of the roofs of the houses on the very edge of the world. Toddy was right. Johnny gazed at his ball and watched it as it slowly went up, up, up into the sky. Up, up, up it went. Johnny quickly dressed and ran out into the garden. But when he got there, he couldn't see his big orange ball anywhere. There was only the sun behind the clouds. It really must be an extra bouncy ball said Toddy when Johnny told him all about it. I mean, to go right up into the sky and out of sight, like an airplane. Will it ever come down again? asked Johnny. Yes, said Toddy, but extra high bounces take extra long time to come down again. Haven't you noticed that? Yes, said Johnny, I have. Well then, I should think it might take a whole day to bounce down again, said Toddy. It might come down after you've gone to bed. So Johnny waited until his mother had said goodnight. Toddy had said, It's no use looking out of your bedroom window. It will come down on the other side of the house. So Johnny ran to his mother's bedroom and peeped out the window. There was the big orange ball coming down, 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 slowly until it touched the roofs of the houses on the edge of the world. Then it slowly disappeared. In the morning, he told Toddy that he thought the ball had gone forever. No, said Toddy. I expect that ball is still bouncing and bouncing. You must not stop looking for it because the bounces get smaller and smaller and soon the ball lies perfectly still. But Johnny didn't have to wait long. He turned round and there in the long grass was his bright orange ball. It can't have been there all the time, he said. No, said Toddy. I know it wasn't there yesterday because I was busy gardening just there. Do you think it was Johnny's ball which he saw on the edge of the world? I think it was the sun. On one side of the house it was rising in the early morning. And on the other side of the house it was just going down again. Just like a big bouncing ball. What do you think? Interesting way to end a story. Mm-hmm. Thought you were trying to get the kids to bed. Why ask a question? Maybe to get the answer for it in the morning. And if you read it at just the right time before bed, you might even have them look out the window. But... I wouldn't have them stare at it like this kid did because, you know, it's the sun. Yes. Because, you know, it kind of hurts your eyes. Don't be like several times from Gravity Falls. Mm-hmm. Hurt my eyes. I'm going to stare at it. <laughs> yeah, so what'd you think? Reasonably cute, but so far out of all of these, the only one I remember rereading and rereading is Nobby the Proud Horse because, hey, let's face it, I was a kid, I was a girl, it was horse. All right, one more. Candy Stripe's cousin. You can see at once that Candy Stripe is a very unusual cat. For one thing, he always wears a yellow knitted woolen sweater. And for another, although he is snow white all over, he has one, and only one, long black whisker. He has plenty of white whiskers, of course. All cats have those. But that black whisker is very special indeed, and very unusual. Candy Stripe is a happy cat. He lives in a warm house, gets plenty of milk to drink and fish to eat, and when he feels like a rest, there's a clean basket with plenty of soft cushions for him to sleep on. Of course, plenty of people live in the house with him. A mother and a daddy, sometimes a granny comes. There are two different grannies and two grandpas, and there is also a boy who lives there all the time. When the boy was little, 
Candy Stripe used to play with him, but he goes to school now, and when he is at home, he always seems to be playing with another boy, called Cousin. Sometimes when the boys would play, Candy Stripe would watch them and wish he had a cousin, because boys don't play cat games, and cats can't play boys' games, and it must be nice, he thought, to be able to play with somebody else. One warm day, Candy Stripe was lying on the garden wall, stretched out in the sun, watching the boys playing with the tent on the lawn. His eyes began to close, and he was nearly asleep, when suddenly the long black whisker twitched. Candy Stripe opened one eye and looked at the whisker. It twitched again, twice, and then again, just to make sure that Candy Stripe was awake. He was by then, of course, wide awake. Down he jumped from the wall, running fast towards the garden gate, over the top and off as fast as his legs would go. Soon he got to the village park, and there in the middle, where it always was, was the duck pond. There was just one little water hen swimming on the pond that day, but she was in a terrible state. She swam backwards and forwards, fussing. As soon as she saw Candy Stripe by the pond, she opened her beak and made such a noise. It was just then that Candy Stripe saw it. Oh, I see, he said. That's what she is so bothered about. Somebody has lost a fur glove in the pond. And there it was, floating towards him, helped along by the water hen. Candy Stripe watched as it came close enough for him to reach out his paw and lift it onto the grass. He looked at it, and then he had another look. Funny sort of glove, he said to himself. It's all fur. And then what do you think happened? The glove squeaked. That made Candy Stripe jump, I can tell you. Gloves can't squeak, said Candy Stripe. But that one did, and he listened again. The glove squeaked, twice, and louder this time. So, stretching out his nose, very carefully, Candy Stripe sniffed the glove. It was little, it was fur, and it was soaking wet, but it wasn't a glove. It was a tiny little white kitten. What a surprise, said Candy Stripe. What a lovely surprise. You are not an old fur glove at all. What's your name? But the little kitten was very shy, and she wouldn't say anything. We've got to get you dry, said Candy Stripe. Come and play in the sun, and you'll soon feel fine. So they played together on the grass, and soon the kitten was a dry and happy little bundle of fluff. But she still didn't know her name. And that's when Candy Stripe said, Come home with me then. You can live with us and you can be my cousin. The boy has a cousin to play with, so you can be my cousin and we can play together. And that is what happened. If you ever pass their house, you may see them in the garden playing cat games. Cousin is growing bigger all the time. But you always know which one is Candy Stripe, because he is the one with the long black whisker. Wow. That's a cute little story. Is this another one you liked? Yes. Yeah, big cat fan here. Also a big cat fan here. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I'm cats and dogs. Yeah. It, when people ask, are you a dog person or a cat person, we usually go, yes. <laughs> Animals? Yes. As long as they're not trying to kill us. This was a very cute story. That's not a fuzzy glove. <laughs> yes, and also we don't know why the kitten was in the pond. I'm rather glad we don't know why the kitten was in the pond. The kitten wasn't in a bag, so I'm hoping the kitten just fell in the pond. Now it got separated. Mm -hmm. What a cute kitten. Yes, there is a poem on this page, but I thought I'd comment on how cute it is. Also, I apologize for not commenting on the art on the previous story. It was very well done, very colorful. This one is back to just the ink line work and the yellow for coloring. Uh, much lighter yellow than in Nobby the Proud Horse and the Rosebud Teapot, though the Rosebud Teapot had more colors in it, but much brighter than Mr. Mortimer. All right, poem time. A knight in shining armor stood a-gazing at the sky. I will get very cold, he said, if I don't move by and by. But when he tried to walk away, struggle as well he might, he found his legs just would not move. His armor had rusted tight. Very cute poem. Very cute illustration. The knight kind of reminds me of like the style they would use for Little Caesars commercials. Also, they should have picked a different font or did something with the text because it's very hard to read. Yes, the background shading 
and the text are somewhat similar in color. I actually had to shift um, the angle of the lighting a little bit to be able to read it clearly. So did I already ask you your overall thoughts on this cute, cute kitty story? <laughs> um, you didn't ask specifically, but you were like, this was one of the ones you liked, wasn't it? <laughs> and yes, it was very cute, and it was about cats. And I still like the line, because boys don't play cat games, and cats can't play boy games. But I have seen a cat play with a Game Boy game. No, I'm sorry, cats and humans can play together quite well. I can understand being distracted by another human. You know, Cousin was there, but I'm pretty sure that's not how cousins work. No. It was nice for the human boy that his cousin came over so often. Okay, so that was three. And to give proper author credits, Nobby the Proud Horse was written by Margaret Connor, Extra Bouncy by Rosemary Garland, and Candy Stripes Cousin by Anna Webb. And these have been selections from My Bedtime Book of Two Minute Stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, we already have another entry of My Bedtime Book of Two Minute Stories. Also, there's a ton of Ember's Reading Room stuff and tons of stuff on the main channel that it's not about books, but you might still find it interesting. Uh, Lux gets to talk more then. Interested in a copy of this book? I'm not sure how many times we're going to be able to find it, because we're going to be posting for the same book every time we do a segment from this book. I'll double check the link to see if it's still available. If not, we'll at least provide an Amazon link and the Ebates link for some generalized shopping. Find something else you're interested in. And Ebates, in case you haven't listened to my spiel before, get cash back for shopping at stores that you probably already shop at. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Thank you for listening.